everybody. So we are back again for another 2021-2022 NHL season preview. And today we're going to be talking about a very interesting, very young team from the Western Conference that I've talked quite a bit about this offseason. I called them a dark horse team. I think they could really surprise people with how good they can be especially with all that youth and young talent coming up. I expect a number of those guys to play in the NHL this year, and I think they could possibly maybe sneak into a playoff spot. We'll see if I put my money where my mouth is when I do my season predictions, but this is the Los Angeles Kings. I kind of am looking at them in a similar spot as the New Jersey Devils over in the East. I think the Kings are a lot... Uh, a lot of similarities with the Kings and the Devils, whereas you have this young core of of guys that are trying to establish themselves in the NHL and push this team upward out of a rebuild. And this offseason, much like the Devils, they've added some veteran pieces in to try and fill out that lineup and really make that next push. So LA is going to be a fun team this year. We'll see if they're ready to make that push or if they're still a year or two away. But uh, before we get into it, I just ask you to please subscribe and hit that thumbs up. Helps out a ton and is greatly appreciated, but let's get started. And before we look forward, we have to look back. The Kings last season, still very much a a young rebuilding team. They went 21-28-7 on the year, 49 points, and finished in 6th place in the West Division. Weren't really even close to the playoffs. Uh, The only teams that finished below them in their division were San Jose and obviously Anaheim. They uh, not very good offensively, actually really, really struggled offensively. Only 2.54 goals for per game last season. That is an area that needs to be better. They added Deneau, they added Arvidsson, they've got Byfield and Kelly Evan, Turcotte and all the youngsters that are going to be looking to have a bigger impact at the NHL level. That goals for number should be a lot higher this year. And if it's not, that is going to be a big problem for this team. But uh, I think you're going to see a lot more offense out of the Kings this season. Defensively, not great either. Uh, 3.02 goals against per game last season. And that is still an area of concern for me. I've talked, a, said a lot of positive things about the Kings this offseason and the potential I think that they have, but they're going to need to be better defensively. And if there's one total area that I really question with this team, it is their ability to keep the puck out of their own net. I like Cal Peterson. I think he can be a very solid starting goaltender, but I still have major questions about their back end, and we'll see if they're able to improve that number this year. Special teams, uh, power play was very okay, 18.9% on the power play. It wasn't terrible. Uh, It definitely wasn't one of the worst in the league, but it wasn't anything that you'd you know brag about either penalty kill though was good uh 83.7 percent on the penalty kill that is a very solid number they're gonna want to keep that up this season moving on now to their offseason moves there really wasn't much um they didn't make a lot of moves this offseason however their ones that they did make were pretty significant especially on the addition side of things Uh, They brought in Victor Arvidsson from the Nashville Predators. Now, he had a very down year points-wise last year, but um, they're looking for him to provide a really solid veteran presence on the wing that can score some goals, hoping for a bounce-back year. And a change of scenery might do Arvidsson some good, getting out of Nashville and having a chance to play with some new players. He could be a big, big addition. If he scores 20 25 goals this year. That's a really solid addition for this Kings team. They also, their big free agent addition was uh, forward Philip Deneau coming over from the Montreal Canadiens. Obviously, he is a great two-way center. Didn't have a huge year offensively last year, but is always extremely reliable defensively. He is going to be great to have down the middle to play on the penalty kill and in shutdown defensive situations. And assuming he gets back to 
um, you know, being the offensive player that he is capable of, or at least somewhat close to that, uh, he's going to be a really good addition for this team. The contract length, you know, there, you, if there's anything to worry about with this, with that signing, it's the contract length, but that's not something that you're going to have to worry about right away. That's down the road. For right now, Philip Deneau is a fantastic addition to the LA Kings, and I think he's going to have a big impact on this team. And they also brought in veteran defenseman Alex Edler from the Vancouver Canucks. Now, I wasn't as high on this move as I was on the Arvidsson and Deneau additions. Edler had a really tough year last year in Vancouver. He's getting up there in age. He's not the player that he once was, and I'm worried that the Kings are going to try and use him way too much much with that in 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 a role that he's not capable of playing anymore um but if they use him properly he is a good veteran guy who's got a ton of experience that could really be beneficial to the young defenseman on the LA Kings roster uh, I just hope that they use him in a proper role and not try and play him 23 24 minutes a night because Alex Edler is not capable of doing that anymore on the subtraction side of things, they really didn't lose much. Um, depth defenseman Curtis McDermott went to uh, the Seattle Kraken in the uh, in the expansion draft and then was subsequently traded. Uh, Matt Luff, depth forward, really wasn't a regular in the lineup. And then organizational depth goaltender Troy Grosnick is gone as well. But they really didn't lose anything this offseason as far as having a significant NHL impact. It was depth, guys. And obviously, they made some big additions with Arvidsson, Deneau, and Edler. So while there were a lot of moves made, there were definitely some impactful moves made by the Los Angeles Kings. And now it is time to take a look at my projected roster for the Kings this year. And I just want to say this. Um, this is obviously just a projection. There is a lot, a lot of roster spots up for grabs, especially among the forwards with this team because they have so many young guys that are trying to work their way into the NHL lineup. And obviously for somebody to come in, somebody's got to come out. And I think a big question is going to be who comes out if these young guys do make it into the lineup. Uh, there's going to be a lot of camp battles this preseason among the forwards. Andre Kopitar, Phil Deneau, Victor Arvidsson, Dustin Brown, Adrian Kempe, Alex Ayafalo. Those guys are obviously all safe. They're staples in the lineup. Um... Andreas Athanasiu, I can't see him coming out of the lineup. They re-signed him for a reason. Uh, Trevor Moore, I had a you know 20 plus point season last year, so I think he probably has a spot. Brendan Lemieux, you need somebody with some toughness, somebody who can fight and protect his teammates. Um, especially with Curtis McDermott gone, this team doesn't have a lot of that. So I think you got to have Brendan Lemieux in the lineup on the fourth line. Uh, you need somebody to protect all of these young players, uh, especially the skill guys that you have coming up. You know, you got to have a policeman out there. So I would expect Lemieux to be in the lineup. Austin Wagner, he also can play a, a pretty physical style at times when he needs to. So he'll probably be on the fourth line. Uh, Gabriel Velarde. I have Quinton Byfield making it. I Velarde didn't have a great year last year, but I don't see him coming out of the lineup. I don't think they're giving up on him just yet. Quinton Byfield. I don't think there's any reason he shouldn't be in the NHL this year. And Arthur Kaliev. I think it's time for Kaliev to to make that jump. I mean, at least get a look at the beginning of the season. This guy has put up huge numbers in the AHL. He's a great goal scorer. Uh, I think he's got to make his way into the lineup. At least give him 10 games to start the year and see what he looks like. Um, I think he'll stick at the NHL level. I think he can add some really good offense to this team. And uh, they, I mean, look at their goal scoring from last year and how bad it was. They need scorers in this lineup. Kaliev has a good chance to make his way into this uh, NHL roster, I think. And then that would kind of leave Blake Lazat kind of as an extra forward. Um, again, I don't know. They're, I think they're probably going to keep 14 forwards because 
Honestly, they have 18 forwards that they could have on the NHL roster. It's going to be really interesting to see who makes it and who starts in the AHL because they have so many young guys trying to work their way into this NHL roster, and they just added two veterans in Deneau and Arvidsson. So while I obviously it makes sense to add veterans and make sure you have some experience in the lineup, especially for a team that's trying to take that next step, those two spots now push two young guys out that could have potentially been in the lineup on a regular basis. So it's going to be a it's going to be a, a real, you know, all out fight for these f- forward roster spots among the young players. I think Velarde stays. I think Byfield and Kaliev both make it. I think they're the most NHL ready. On the defensive side of things, obviously Drew Doughty, number one guy, anchor of the defense. They brought in Alex Edler. He's a veteran. Sean Walker and Matt Roy, they're both uh, becoming, you know, pretty solid middle of the lineup type D-men. I wouldn't, you know, want them necessarily being a top guy, but in the middle of the lineup, they're, they're fine. Uh, they've got veteran Ole Mata, and then they've got two young guys in Tobias Bjornfoot and Mikey Anderson. And honestly, between Mata, Bjornfoot, and Anderson, they've got, you know, two spots there in the starting lineup and one extra. I don't know. You know, if you want to go veteran, then obviously Mata's got more experience. But if you want to play the young guys and get both Bjornfoot and Anderson in the lineup, then Ole Mata might be the odd man out as the seventh defenseman. We'll have to wait and see what direction direction they want to go in but one of those guys is going to be the number seven and the other two are going to be in the lineup and obviously Dowdy, Edler, Walker, and Roy will all be in the lineup on a regular basis so I think the fight is just who's going to be the odd man out is the number seven. As far as goaltending goes, Cal Peterson is your starting goaltender. Uh, You're coming back with Peterson and Quick as your goaltending tandem which it has been. Uh, It was last year as well. Uh, But I think Peterson has taken over the starting role with this team. Jonathan Quick, up there in age, performance has not been even close to what it was in his prime. Um, I think Peterson's your goaltender at this point. Quick, obviously, is still a 1B and can start games and can win you some games. But Cal Peterson is going to be the guy that this team is leaning on to be their, their starting goaltender and the guy that they're leaning on to lead them, you know, to hopefully a above 500 and successful season. They just re-signed him to a, a pretty big contract. I think it was four years, five mil per Cal Peter. This is Cal Peterson's team now. On the depth side of things, well, they have a ton of it, especially up front. Um, Obviously, I have Byfield and Kaliev going into the lineup on a regular basis. That means some guys are going to have to come out, and we'll have to see who that is. But Carl Grundstrom, I definitely think, is probably one of them that comes out of the lineup. And basically, I would say Kaliev takes his spot. Um, they also have Lias Anderson. He uh, He's a depth guy, I think, at this point. Rasmus Kupari is trying to work his way in. And they have some other guys, other young guys as well. Um, Tyler Madden comes to mind. And more. they have so many young forwards that are trying to work their way into this lineup. But there's only a limited number of spots. Like I said, training camp is going to be an absolute dogfight for who makes it and who doesn't. On the back end, as far as extra defensemen go, they've got Christian Wallinen, who can you know you don't want in the lineup on a nightly basis, but can play in a depth role. Kale Clegg, uh, they're kind of waiting on him to make that uh, jump, but he's gotten passed, I think, on the depth chart by Bjornfort and Anderson. So Clegg is in a depth spot now. Sean Dursey's in a depth spot now. Um, he's definitely going to be an AHL guy at least to start, but you could call up if needed. And as far as third goaltender goes, I think it's likely to be Garrett Sparks. Um, I definitely think that they, you know, they're the other goaltenders they have down in the AHL are really young guys with no NHL experience. So at least Sparks has played some NHL games. And if something happens to Peterson or quick, you know, he can, he can, you know, come in and, and at least back up and play a game or two here or there. But, uh, I think he's likely to be the third goaltender. And then obviously Peterson and Quick are your clear cut tandem at the NHL level. But that is my projected roster for the LA Kings. And obviously, like I said, this is just a projection. There are a lot of spots amongst the young players up for grabs. 
in this uh, in this training camp and in this preseason, and we'll have to wait and see come the start of the ye- regular season how it all shakes out. But uh, the LA Kings, like I've been saying, I think are going to be a really really interesting team this year. I think they're a dark horse team. I think they have the chance to be good if they get contributions from those young guys. If you know Byfield is ready, if Kaliev is ready, if Dano and Arvidsson step in and be the players that they're expected to be. In a weak division out in the Pacific, this team could potentially make some noise and they could maybe steal a playoff spot. I'm not saying that it's a guarantee, but they could be in the hunt for a playoff spot, finish in that third, fourth, or fifth area out there in the in the Pacific, and who knows what could happen. Now, on the, on the same token, if these young guys aren't ready and they don't make that impact at the NHL level, you're probably going to see a very similar year to what they had last year, and this team is still going to be a year or two away. Um, but uh, There's a lot riding on whether or not the youngsters are ready to contribute at the NHL level or not yet, and that's basically, I think, what's going to decide where this team is at, whether they're ready to make that jump or if they're still in that rebuild phase, and uh, we're going to find that out this season, but... With that, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are in the description. If you'd like to further support the channel, merch store, memberships, and donation link are in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.